No, uh, placing a sentry makes sense, since uh, usually, especially in this patch, uh, you will want to have Rune Vision, so I wouldn't say even it's 50-50, it's more like 60-40, since usually if you place it on the right hand side, you can, yeah, you can usually spot a ward who to get. So yeah, mm. smart, smart move, smart move. Right. Should I ask like a support to, to vary that, or is that fine with me paying for it? Well, as you get your armor marks, usually supports will either provide the sentry themselves or try to de-war themselves. So either way, yeah, you should see sentry plays more often as you climb. Okay, sweet. Yeah, so yeah, you can do it yourself. You can ask for support. Great. But yeah, uh, getting a sentry in the middle lane it makes, it makes, makes perfect sense. Okay, cool. Right, so tell me about this match. Tell me what your general problems were and what would you yeah. like to improve. All right, so generally there's uh, two issues that I have. First of all is uh, early in this one, I felt like it was a... Um, I felt like I could have pressed my advantage a bit more because I felt like uh, I was stronger than the opponent. Uh, I felt like maybe I could have bullied them out of lane. But I wasn't really sure how to approach that. Uh, and I know you talk a lot about like farm lane, kill lane thing. And I feel like uh, in most of my games, I just go farm lane because I, I don't know how to get the opponent into a position where I can kill them. So uh, that's the first thing. And then the second thing is in, in the mid game, uh, I ended up kind of getting into just like a farming rotation. And um, a, we ended up kind of falling back behind in around 35 minutes we we actually uh fell behind on all the graphs and it looked like we were going to lose for a moment despite me doing so well so um I, i'd say probably just leaning and then the mid mid game sure uh one note immediately while we before we began uh is like you said you would you would approach most lanes as farm lanes but i while farm lane makes perfect sense and it's it's a perfectly valid play style, I would say for kind of general climbing and stuff, the sooner you learn to approach lanes as skill lanes, the better prepared you will be for when you climb to uh, divine or higher, because mm -hmm. by that by that time most opponents will be familiar familiar with kill lanes and they will try to make a kill lane out of you. So if you just play the lanes passively, you will never learn what the opponent can do to you to make, make you a kill lane. And likewise, what can you do to them to punish them? Like right now, uh, Storm versus TA, even before the game begins, you, can, you know that TA at level 6 is a perfectly killable target. You might not know how to set it up, but you know mm -hmm. that she, she, she can die. If she goes out of position, if she if you take the refraction charges off, she will very mm -hmm. likely die uh, die without a support rotation. So, mm. in in games like this where you can actually see the opponent as a potential kill lane, you should always keep in mind that you can do steps to make the opponent die. Okay. In, instead of thinking beforehand, hmm, I will farm here. You should approach with a mindset that. Hmm, I will figure out how this player plays, if if the rotations are likely, if if he responds with regeneration, if he runs away, and if you see the conditions being right, that means uh, TA is sitting at like 70% uh, of HP, or not mm -hmm. caring about anything, and you see, well, she's she can die here, and then you take the kill, and that, and that's a kill lane, but if if you approach mm -hmm. with the farm lane, you will never reach these conditions where you can see a, a, a target as a potential uh, killable target. Did that make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I feel like when I saw TA, I thought like refraction charges, so it's going to be impossible to kill her because she'll just refraction shield. All right. Well, yeah, we'll talk about uh, how to deal with that in, in, in the laning phase, I'm sure. So yeah, let's... All right, uh, great. Uh, Sweet. Unless you have any other pre-laning phase questions, we can begin. All right. How how did you feel the laning went overall? Uh, I mean, I felt like I let her farm and I farmed myself, and that was kind of it. We kind of left each other alone. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's a perfectly good draw.
Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Did you try to pull the creeps with this uh, little movement here? Uh, yeah, I try, but I'm very bad at it, to be honest. <laughs> uh, right. I, I don't know what it is. I feel like other people do it so much easier. <laughs> Well, we can we can actually figure it out right right now right here. All right. Like well, most mid players will have the high ground vision at this point, so she does. She can she has ward here, and you do you have ward here? So we can rule out that the problem was division. And if the problem wasn't division, the then the problem is the other the only other problem left. Can you can you can you figure out what it is? Uh, did I not click him right? <laughs> it was most likely. Uh, I might... It was most likely the range. Let's let's see in slow motion. Yep, you right click here here and zero creeps are in the range. In what range? The aggro pull range. How large is that? Uh, storm players actually have it really nicely because it's really, really close to Storm's native attack range. I see. Yeah, so basically what happened is you right-clicked the TA outside of the aggro pool range, which is about 400 units, I believe. So, and then the aggro was put on cooldown for about 2-3 seconds. And after that, you can try again. I see, that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna ask if, you, if you're used to pulling, but yeah, you, you are, you just... Mm, misranged it. I know that it's something I should be doing. I, I know I mess it up a lot. <laughs> yeah, just something to think about for in the future. Denied. Now, in this situation, can you tell me one particular play you can do? Uh, I could hit that back range creep a few times and try to uh, remnant it for both range creeps, maybe? Yes, very nice. Essentially, not only this ensures that you will get this farm really, really nice, really fast, while TA is still level 1 and cannot pressure as much, this will also mean that the wave will push under the enemy tower. Which again, TA is really, really, really good at harassing you. So you should minimize the time creep waves spend at the river as much as possible. And right now, since the creeps are on your high ground, she cannot uh, play aggressively because of that. It is the perfect time for you to go aggressively yourself and either hit her a bunch if you were playing for a kill lane, or if in the, in the case of farm lane, uh, just prepare the creeps for immediate shutdown. But I, I can see you're you're a bit uh, hes hesitating on on that play. Yeah, for sure. If anything, you you, you actually you got scared of her and re retreated under the tower when Tiet level one. She has no way to pressure you. Hmm. Yeah. So w what I'm saying is, we should also think about what the enemy gains on level ups. Uh, TA level one. She only has the side blades thingy mm -hmm. uh, which doesn't deal a lot of damage without the refraction charges which which she wouldn't get at and at at least until level two so level one while she's level one you can absolutely stand your ground and either nuke her or nuke the creep wave especially if you have tangos because any damage you will take you can heal back up mm, yeah absolutely so in this case what i'm saying is you played uh, you've played, uh, how do I say it? Too Overly cautious... defensively? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Too cautiously when there was no reason to do so. Got it. And that allowed her to even be in the position where she can deny the creeps. While she right. didn't, you shouldn't even let her to be in this position. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I had done that play earlier, I could have secured both of them, for sure. And right now, the creeps meet in a not so favorable position. Now you, you will have to dance around the mid lane, and sh she's level 2, and now you will start taking serious damage. But if in the previous lane you would have actually pressed your advantage, the creeps would meet under her tower. And that's something you should think about. You should think about uh, what my actions in this wave will mean for actions in the next wave. First blood. First blood. Okay, all good here. A uh, little note here, it, it might not be on your mind in a live match, but if it is, right at this moment, you could ag try to aggro the small, uh, the melee creep and drag him onto your range creep. And that, okay. and that will create a potential for you to deny. It might not be a deny, I mean, she might still take the creep, but just creating this scenario and thinking about these scenarios, you will get some of them right. Some of them, after doing a play like this, after dragging an extra creep, will allow you to deny uh, an extra range creep, get uh, XP advantage, and over a, over a long session of games, it might lead to an, an increased win rate. Something small if, like if I that. Were to... mm -hmm. Sorry. If yeah. I were to pull the melee creep right now, would my melee creeps follow, or would they go with the TA? It depends on the closest target. Uh, and it doesn't matter what your melee creeps do because their range, uh, their uh, her melee creep would still follow you, and you can absolutely place him on top of your range creep. I see. Okay. So yeah, what I was saying is, uh, in the long run, doing plays like these will increase our win rate. Something small like this can snowball into a better win rate. Oh yeah, she you got it deny anyway. If if she was smarter, yeah, she would have noticed the the positioning and then would have moved to secure it. Right, definitely. Yeah, she had a hard time with the range creeps this lane for sure. Now, again, uh, what she's doing, she's holding the creeps, so she wants the wave to be in her position. And. Once you notice her making a play like this, you should always think of a counterplay. Like, you will know in the next 10 seconds you will have an unfavorable lane position. So, uh, there are several options. You can simply wait out for the wave to push back. In the meanwhile, you can stack and take the rune. You can, if you still have regen, which I think you do, yes you do, you can simply aggro the creeps down. But uh, what I'm saying is, as soon as you see an opponent doing a particular play, your mind should already be calculating potential counterplays. Did that make sense? Yeah, I see. So when I see that she's taking the creeps, I should be doing something about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when she's so really, really vulnerable, because there's like five seconds period of time and she does not want to change position, because she's holding the creeps outside of the tower or aggro range. Right. But yeah, she did accomplish her goal. The lane is in her favor. And you are taking harassment damage. Your first uh, first job, if you decided to stay in the lane, was to pull the creeps down. Got it. Okay, I'm gonna see the next five seconds and give you a tip on it. Let's see if you do it. No. Can you see that? Can can you see what I was gonna say? Uh, no, I'm not sure. It's regarding vortex. Um, should I vortex her right now so I secure the deny? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Okay. As soon as you get level three, you get the tool to mess with the. Uh, at a mid laner in way more than just damage. I see. Yeah. Okay. I I usually think that board, uh just so I can combo, but yeah, I could definitely use it. For that. 
Oh, one more, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. What you did there was not efficient at all. Uh, your health is nowhere near the kill threshold that EA can pull off. So you spending that 3 seconds to walk over the street to eat it is counterproductive to the general laning purpose. Because you are wasting time on tasks that are not necessary. It, it might seem like a small thing to, to talk about, but in the end, these things add up. Like, like I said, uh, securing the ridge creep adds up in the long run. And, and stuff like this, uh, movements that are not necessary, they also add up in the long run of efficiency. Okay. If you're not in a in a threat of dying, then just just walk back, uh, push the wave, and then as the creeps move to her tower, and then you can find the tree in the downtime. Top is missing. Yeah, so I missed that creep because of it. I see. Yeah. And again, you. you you walked all the way through the high ground instead of <laughs> uh, a river when when like i said ta ta has no kill potential on you yet especially if you're high hp so if you if you want to play this lane as a farm lane then just move back asap and push out alternatively what i can tell you one second let's see it let's see it if you see TA going for the rune, what is stopping you from staying in this lane a little bit longer and while she's gone, pushing the entire wave to her tower? Not only you will get all the last hits, she will have to race back to her tower and you then will be free to take the rune. Oh, that's much smarter. I'll do that in the future for sure. Uh, the mid laner's priority is always not only think enough of his game, but reacting to the enemy's game. You're not playing against a bot, you're playing against a real person. As soon as you see a movement, like I said, you gotta think of a counter movement. Top is missing. So during these first two minutes, uh, we've seen like uh, a couple of things you, you can actually do in the future games to improve improve the efficiency. And that alone is worth a couple hundred MMR because you will start doing it and the enemy does not yet know what those efficiencies are. Uh, one more uh, TA specific, specific thing, uh, both for you and uh, whatever viewers will watch this in the future, is that if you position yourself right behind the your ranged creep and TA still wants to harass you she will inevitably hit the ranged creep which uh, results in two things either she will get the ranged creep denied because of the psi blades or she will she will see that she would get the ranged creep denied and not even harass you in the first place so by positioning yourself near the ranged creep you are most likely either eliminating the harassment, alleviating it a bit, or oh, Lord, what, what, what was I saying? Basically, it's, it's either harassment. Ah, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Either harassment or being free in the lane because you cannot harass. I'm not sure if the ending made sense. <laughs> sorry. Uh, are you saying I should be staying in the middle of the creep wave at that point? No, no, no. As long as you hug the ranged creep, she will have to be very careful about harassing you. Because if she harasses you, she will inevitably hit the ranged creep, which puts it in the deny range. There we go. I see. Complete. So stand right next to the ranged creep so I can deny it if she wants to harass. Yeah. She that cannot, makes sense. She cannot harass you without uh, messing up the, the last hit preparation for the ranged creep. Yeah, for sure. Well, the, the same things we talked about are being repeated here, so uh, no, not not really any point to dissecting this lane any further. 
can skip ahead unless I see something important. Sure. Oh yeah, also on a farm lane, uh, especially against TAs, if you if you would push out the lane as soon as possible, you would still have time to go and sack the camp, which as a farm lane you should absolutely do. Right now I haven't seen a single instance where you deliberately walk in the middle of the creep wave just to wave clear it. And you have the tools to do so, you have all the mana, you have all the health, so... Uh, what I'm saying is you should, even in the farm lanes, you should still play somewhat aggressive, even if it is just to quickly clear the creeps so you can take other tasks such as stacking or the rune. Yeah, I definitely think I was overly scared of the TA. As, as long as you're noticing these things yourself right now as you're watching this, you are on the right track. Great. Stupendous. All right, can you tell me what was the wrong play? Yeah, the I should right play? stack this one. Yep, stack, take the rune, take the bounty, and get back to mid lane and wait clear. There is a very clear rotation you as a farming mid laner in a farm lane should do. And you do not touch the big camps until you are sufficiently equipped to clear those big camps first. Okay, I figured since there were the two bounty runes there, I would have the mana to clear the big camp, so I should do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely should have stacked that. Sure. A big camp is still worth less than a full wave of creeps. And since, I see. The, since TA cannot punish you yet for those creeps, you should absolutely prioritize the creeps. Against Shadow Shrine. Friend, yeah, absolutely go for the camp because you might die here. But TA, especially this, this TA, the player, is pretty passive. Okay, so I should have stacked the camp, grabbed the bounty, and then went back to lane to get that wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Top is missing. Top is missing. Oh, that's juicy. I see you're a bit lost. What was your thought process right now? Uh, I was thinking this is a good time to go to the small camp, and then I realized, oh, I took the small camp, so I can't do that. <laughs> right, and... all right. Uh, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you uh, what you can do in case you have wave cleared a wave under your tower. This is the perfect time to actually go back a little bit and block these creeps so they can meet a little bit on your high ground, which would make it really safe, really fast, really easy for you to wave clear the next wave and be on your way. I see. Yeah, instead of just standing in the middle. <laughs> yeah, 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 every single action you take should lead to something. Just staying in the middle is, is, is a no-no. And see, because of the... If you were to blo have blocked, you wouldn't have the situation where you are missing the range creeps here in an empty sure. lane. Right. That play alone would have saved you like 5 seconds, and again, 5 seconds saved is efficiency. Absolutely. And see, if you were, if you were to play this as a, as a kill lane, your level 6 is level 5. If you create a creep block advantage and she has to go across the river to hit to just to last hit, you absolutely have the kill potential. We, of course, with extra mangoes because she, you will have to waste this, some refraction charges first. But if she sets up herself to be killed, for example, if she aggros the creeps, the creeps will take down the refraction very soon, uh, very fast, and, and then you can, even with the sentry here, you can absolutely kill her during that time. You said a creep block advantage? Well, what I said is, uh, if you block the creeps, they will end up in your high ground, and she would have to walk really far away from her tower just to I last see. hit. Okay. 
which makes any rotation either too late. Well, just too late, yeah, too late. For sure. Yeah, I think this concludes the laning phase. Do you have any other questions about uh, laning? No, I think that was great. Cool, cool. For sure. Well, let's see how the mid game goes. Yeah, I see in all your games you grab those three mangoes, so I've been doing the same. <laughs> it's a good strategy, yes. Even if you don't have a kill potential here, you might have some in the side lane, so having some is, is always good. Yeah, I see the same mistakes being repeated here. Even even if TA was styling on you really hard before your level 6, after level 6 you have all the ways to not die, because if, if she goes too aggressive, you just zip out. So even here, there is not, not a single reason for you not to simply walk in, press Q a couple of times, and walk out. And yet you, you, you're playing this lane as if she hits... As, as if she would hit you for 300 damage with every single hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm. Yeah, so right here, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kill lane or not, she would be dead. You have three mangoes, you can go aggressively here. She have wasted her refraction on the aggro, you have vortexed. You hit the combo, everything was done correctly. You think I could have killed her here? I think you could have killed her there. Oh, wow. Alright. She has no fairy fire, just four magic one charges. And here I should have been taking the catapult and range creep, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I might, did miss my have. combo there. But... Actually, uh, I take it back. You did have three remnants instead of three overloads. So, yeah, this is a farming, not a kill lane. I forgot. Yeah, without overload, you cannot just hit her continuously with the overloads. And she wouldn't stay in one place for the remnants to hit. So, no, sorry, I take it back. It, it, it wasn't a possible kill. If okay, you, but if, if I had you were, gone for kill, if you were playing a kill lane and maxed overload, then yes, it, it would be a kill lane. Okay. At this point, you mentioned one of the things that you've changed recently is going for a kill lane more often. What heroes against who you would only do a farm lane? Like Shadow Fiend? No, Shadow Fiend oh, is the epitome of a kill lane. You right, survive until you can... level six and, and just just style on him continuously. The, the heroes that you would do farming against is those you have no potential of killing. So, yeah, we can talk about this a little bit. Uh, killing farming is always dynamic. For example, Void Spirit, Ember Spirit, if you get level 6 before them, it's very much a kill lane. But if they get level 6, it's very much a farm lane, because neither, neither of you can kill each other then. Uh, against something like Dragon Knight, it's always a farm lane, because she's, he's simply too tanky. Especially he, if he's smart and he gets some wand, wand charges and, and range drops. So that's always a farm lane. Uh, other meta heroes, I, I cannot think of any current meta hero that does not have the potential to be a kill lane. Unless a, a player is very fed, every single hero I can think of right now is killable. Okay, got it. And right now, you can see she teleported with 70% uh, of HP. So on your mind, the question should be thinking right now, hmm, can I create a situation where I can kill her? And what I... What I, I could have blocked the creeps, huh? Yeah, what I would do right now is to try to block the creeps as soon as possible. So they meet, again, on your high ground. So she would have to, again, be in a bad positioning. And if she right clicks you, if the creeps go on her, that is the signal for you to go aggressive and try to kill her. But again, yeah, it's, not, it's, sure. not, it's not very feasible now because of the remnant maxing, ma maxing 
Mm -hmm. Do you, do you ever go like uh, two one two for example until you to to, to delay the decision? Yeah, two one two is for like I said for uncertain lanes where you're not really sure if you'll hit level six first, so it's a kind of an insurance. So it. it would make sense against Ember or Void. Me, myself, I usually, on all the lanes, I go Overload first, because still, if I cannot make plays in the mid lane, I will try to make plays in the side lanes. So either way, my okay. Overload will get used. I see. For sure. And here I should be going to the wave and just nuking it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of what you did, so it's fine. It's just a lot of um, indecisive movements add up to a lost farm over time. Yeah, I can tell in most of my Storm Spirit games, I'm well below the average net worth that I should be at. Oh, and yeah, send yourself a sentry ASAP just so you can feed on traps. Ah, oh, that's a good point. Dyer's top tower is about to fall. That's right. And here I should be blocking my creep wave again there. Well, at, at this point, the block doesn't do much because you're not playing for a kill lane, so it just it doesn't matter where you wait for. I see. And right now, as soon as you get a really good rune, no matter what skill build you went, this is the moment you start looking for kills. Because of the arcane, because of the regen, because of the double damage. Absolutely. So now I would go back and block the creeps as soon as I knew that I would be taking this arcane and try to create an advantageous position again for TA. There are so many little plays you can do just to create an advantageous position. Mm -hmm. That was a sad moment. It was. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's rewind. Let's see what you saw in this moment. So you looked over, and what made you decide? that teleporting was the best option. I have an arcane rune and there's a sniper. Right, so our thought process was to just teleport and go for some kills, yeah? Yeah, because I have three mangoes and I have an arcane rune, so I figured I was really strong. Right, in these moments, what you should do is not actually teleporting, but uh, wave clear... Actually, let, let me back up a bit. In moments where the where your team is not in immediate danger of dying, which they weren't in this case, you shouldn't rush like that. You should uh, wave clear the creeps here and make your way on foot, especially if you have boots, to the lane where you intend to make the place. And as you walk, you make your intentions known, either through pings, through voice chat, or through regular chat, that you are coming. And that, that lets your team better prepare for this encounter, and leaves you a teleportation to return to your lane quickly, so you're not losing any farm. So in this case, if you have walked, your team would either have played a little bit less aggressively, not to lose health, a little bit more aggressively to reduce the enemy's health, but either way, I think 
this, this entire situation would be better set up if you walked towards victory, towards this Kiramatsu's victory for your team. I see. Did that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I'm usually not... I don't like walking, but I, I can see how that would have been the right call here. Man, man. Because I'm kind of just initiating and then everybody else is way further back. <laughs> Yo, man, back up. You don't like walking. As a storm, 90% of your gameplay will be walking. Yeah, get used to it. That's what I have the ult for. <laughs> storm is all about walking. Nothing more, nothing less. And here I should have dashed back into my team rather than running away. Yeah, pretty much. I see that now. So basically, yeah, what, because you have decided to spontaneously teleport here, you have arrived with about half mana, which isn't very efficient in case someone rotated, which is exactly what TA did. If you have walked, you would still have time to clarity up a bit. You would have arrived at a hundred percent and at a way, way better angle to initiate and save some mana, which is again, right. efficiency. Yep. I see that. Yeah, and here that was a bad dash to the left. See that? Yeah. Uh, one more thing you could have done here to avoid dying is uh, lead the TA into somewhere on the low ground of the trees and dash uphill, zip uphill, so she cannot follow. Oh, that would have been smarter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll focus this session exactly on the early game and mid-game and, uh, mid movements. Just not to give you an informational overload. Yeah, this is already a lot to focus on, it's good. Yeah, there's like a million other topics we could cover, like uh, where we should play right now or what you can expect, but uh, I would like to keep the information to the minimum just so you can properly digest everything we have talked about before. That's cool. One note, though, is that the large zips like this leave you very, very vulnerable to any potential enemy rotations because basically you have ex expend, spent most of your mana just on your zip and you will spend the rest yeah. of it on trying to kill DA. So if, if someone like a Stormbreaker, Centaur, Dawnbreaker would, 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 be, would happen to be nearby, they would, they would mess you up. Uh, <laughs> to, to avoid these situations, if you believe some action is gonna happen, and in this in this match, absolutely you can, you can foretell that action will happen in the mid lane. Uh, in that case, what you you should do is you should play as close to the tower as possible. Like you're a bit close, but you could be closer. You could be in the small right, camp. I could be taking the creep wave there, for example. Yeah, creep wave, small camp, this camp, this camp. This camp is too far for you to react with resources in mind. Like, yes, you can react. You absolutely did react. You you did a, a play, which was not necessarily the right play, but it played out correctly. <laughs> but if you were to limit your movements to the, just the general area of the mid tower, you would be more efficient and safe in case the enemy would have backup. Got it. 
So basically, it was a risky play that worked out. Yep. So, after you have killed the TA, what information did you gain from it? Uh, what do you mean, what information? Uh, yeah, tough question, I know. Um, okay, let me, let me answer this for you. Because neither Centaur nor Dawnbreaker have reacted to the gang, you know, you know they weren't close. And you can actually see Centaur in the top lane. So mm. what this tells you is that the mid lane is currently defenseless. And your move is to go back to jungle when you have second and third hero with you in the mid lane. So the correct play here is to push the advantage. TA is dead. Take this time with your three heroes to actually deal some damage to the mid tower. Even if I'm low on mana? Even if you're low on mana. What can kill you here? Nothing. Because you're not actually jumping into danger. You you have vision. Just stand next to the creep waves. You're safe. What can kill you here? No one can kill you here. Until Centaur gets dagger. You are unkillable. Because everyone who might kill you would have to walk to you a very long way. Which is enough time for you to react. Okay. This this is the problem of most lower MMR games that players they make a play, but they do not recognize what opportunities does the play open up. Right. I was definitely afraid because I was on a hundred mana, so I'm like, oh, if I go push, I'm gonna die. But you're right. I have nothing to die to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always keep in mind who has the kill potential on you. In this game, no one, until Sun gets dagger. They have no way to set up stuns on you. Hell, looking at the draft now, they they have one stun in total. It's it's a free storm game. For sure. Well, hello, there's a the dagger. <laughs> Kinda fucked up my dodge there. <laughs> yeah, but I, I see the intention, it's fine. Okay, let's talk about target priorities a little bit. This moment right here. As soon as you see uh, John Breaker using her W thing, you'd know that she no longer has the positioning tool. So if she engages you here, and you zip away, she would have to walk. Which is enough time for you to react if, if she gets close to you. So right. the correct play here is to actually jump to the TA. Oh. Yeah, you and Lena together with the Vortex with the Orchid should absolutely take her down, while Dawnbreaker moves very, very slowly towards you. I see. Like, even if you kill Dawnbreaker here, uh, TA is still the more dangerous person. 
the farm on her is way scarier than farm on Dawnbreaker, which makes her the better target to go on. Uh, okay. And yeah, she gets away. Or does she? I honestly don't remember. Yeah, she does. Yeah, okay, okay. That was also risky, though. It was. Oh, wait, no, they were dead. Yeah. I don't know. Life skill could have been there. Oh, yes, and Scent was dead, so yeah. It was okay. Okay, so far so good. Ah, this will come in hand. Middle is missing. So yeah, then you move with your teams, make uh, make place with Orchid. Here's my pension. Over here now. Yeah, let's uh, well, let's once again mention efficiency in terms of Storm's mana management. You are really, really low. You'll still have a few mangoes. You have the battle. No clarities though. You should always have clarities in the backpack. And the first thing you do is zip towards Centaur. You zip towards the fattest target in the game. Who alone, <laughs> who alone cannot kill you. So basically, you, you extend all your mana pool on a target which isn't scary in any way. When in reality, you should just walk to him and play... Instead of an active storm right now, you should play a reactive storm. If sand jams on one of your teammates, then you can vortex, then you can orc it. Until that happens, you walk, you save your mana. Okay. Right now, if they went on you, you would be so dead, man. You would be so dead. <laughs> I should have died there for sure. Well, maybe not because of the three mangoes, but still, it, it's a risky play. Imagine how much more you could have done done if you would have played your mana pool more efficiently. Right. Basically, my general tip for these situations uh, where you walk with the team expecting ganks is either you walk with the team with 50% mana and more, or you don't walk with the team at all and go to base to regen or wait for the rune in the meanwhile jungling. Oh yeah, 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 that's... <laughs> this illustrates my previous point perfectly, that as soon as Tent gets daggered, they have a really good kill potential on you, so you should be very mindful of where you're farming. Yeah, okay, unless there is some uh, particular place in the game that's gonna pop out, I think we can end the session here. There's still a lot of to, for you to digest. 
all yeah. the movements, I think, will just repeat themselves. All right, yeah, I, I don't think there's any sticking out question here. I think that's a lot to go off of already. Yeah, cool. So, do you have any follow-up questions, uh, elaborations on anything we have talked about? Um, no, I, I think I'm good. Uh, well, what do you do in a, in a mid matchup that you're not familiar with? So, like, I, I think one of the reasons that I wasn't very comfortable against TA is that I haven't played many games against TA lately. I, do you do you just always go for a kill lane? For example, I just played mid against a CK and I was really thrown off because it's a CK. Like, what what do you do in scenarios like that? Oh damn, good question. Um, hmm. Well, I cannot speak for you, or or most players, but uh, me myself, I am pretty much familiar with all the possible encounters just because I have good knowledge on all the heroes. So in my mind, I, I can always more or less calculate how much damage they can do to me, how much damage I can do to them. So I don't think this question is directly answerable. Uh, on a general scale, it's more on a player to player scale. Like if you as a player uh, are familiar with the opposing hero, then yes, you can calculate 